So you just finished the root canal. What are the recommendations for post-op meds and instructions for the patient? So we have meds, and then we have instructions. Okay, the meds. Every one of my patients that can take them <coughs> is given a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. My preference is naproxen sulfate or over-the-counter as a leave. 12 hour effect. Okay. Ibuprofen. Also half the dose. Okay. So they need two instead of four. Two of these twice a day instead of four ibuprofen four times a day. Um, I want my patients to have a very even level of inset in the 40, first 48 to 72 hours after the procedure because that's going to give them the best outcome. They can easily take two after breakfast and two after dinner. With the ibuprofen, it's going to be more spotty. Um, if they can't take NSAIDs, I would consider a steroid like uh, Decadron. or a Medrol dose pack. If they're really going to have a lot of uh, discomfort, rarely do I need to give steroids. And some of your patients will say, you know, I'll just take Tylenol if they can't take insets. Um, the antibiotics uh, no erythromycin. Um, for conventional treatment, no antibiotics, okay? No antibiotics. <clears throat> if you're treating the whole root canal system, if you're using irrigants that are effective, if you're doing three-dimensional obturation, uh, it's rare that you're going to have a post-op flare-up. We tell all of our patients they could, but usually not. It's not going to be an issue. If you do have a flare-up or you have a patient that's diabetic, has some other immune uh, comp compromised uh, situation, then uh, you may want to put them on an antibiotic prophylactically. I would think of Keflex first, 500 milligrams, two stat <clears throat> at the appointment if you can, one TID for a week. If they're acute, I'm going to give them Augmentin. 500 milligrams, two stat, one TID. <clears throat> and uh, if they're allergic to penicillin, I'm probably going to give them clindamycin. If they have a flare up, clindamycin 150, this is different than you're going to get on the package, it's 150 uh, QID. I get better effects with less stomach problems, 150 milligrams, one, four, four times a day than I do at 300 milligrams, three times a day. <clears throat> and this is seven days. Another option that I like is biaxin. It's a macrolide, 500 milligrams. And this is a BID. And so you're gonna give them 10 tabs. and real effective. Uh, erythromycin will do nothing for you. This will uh, help your patients. Um, let's talk about post-op instructions because that's going to inform this conversation quite a bit. And I'm going to give you a piece of advice that I've learned the hard way. Um, that is always inform about post-op infections. Okay, if, uh, infectious flare-up rate after well done endo is like one to two percent. So if I gave all my patients antibiotics after I finished treating them, uh, 98 to 99 of them would be over-medicated. 
So what's the answer? Well, I used to give them antibiotics if I thought they needed it, not give them antibiotics if they didn't need it, especially in a vital case. And I had a couple of cases come back with really intense uh, post-op infections and uh, it's hard to look good if you didn't if you didn't prepare the patient for that. So what do we talk about? We talk about the trend that they're going to expect. The trend should look like this. Here's day, here's 24, 48, 72 hours. It will reach a peak at 48 hours and it should get better every day until we get out to 30 days. And it should feel just like their other teeth. And then I tell them, if you are one of the unlucky one or two percent, you'll know it because instead of starting to get better at 48 hours, it's going to continue to get worse. And if you're at day three, 72 hours beyond that, and it's still getting worse, I want you to call me. We'll give you pain meds. We'll put you on an antibiotic. It's not going to influence the outcome of the case at all. You just have a post-op infection your body needs, your immune system needs a little bit of help with. But when I tell everybody about this possibility, when that one or two percent has it happen to them, they're pre-informed. I find out sooner. I can get them on an antibiotic sooner. Their course to healing is, is shorter. And also, I don't look like an idiot because I foretold the future they could have this happen. The opposite way is not, if you don't tell them that possibility, and it occurs to them, uh, loss of confidence can happen.